Okay. Yeah. Uh, Joe Chambers. Yeah, I, mean, yeah. I see a whole lot. Yeah, of yeah. So we Larry were, Ridley. I, I know all these guys. Huh? Yeah. You know Larry Ridley. Oh, I know Good. everybody. Before we get started, if you don't mind, I'm gonna get a pen and maybe you could write something for us before we get started. Okay. We're gonna interview in a different room. Okay. And, uh, uh, who was in here most recently? Oh, here's Tom Brown. Here's your friend. <laughs> it's Tom Brown. Okay. Yeah, this Tom Brown right there. I'm trying to see where Benny Golson is. Benny Golson? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Benny Golson. Oh, so those are those are the best. Brother. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> You got 30 minutes, maybe? Do you have 30 minutes? I'm here. Okay. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to break it up into two. We'll see what happens. Yeah. No more than 30 minutes. Okay. Yeah, we have Norman Connors here in studio with us here at WNCU North Carolina Central University. And uh, we're so happy to have you here, Mr. Connors. I know. Uh, that you've been to the Triangle before because I saw you over at the Prime Smokehouse. Uh, mm -hmm. You performed over there. And you're visiting uh, Durham because you're going to be performing at the Haytai Heritage Center uh, coming up Friday. Right. You're going to be presenting two shows, seven and nine. We want to really invite the folks to come out and hear uh, Mr. Connors. And we want to, we're grateful that you come into our studios and we'll get a chance to talk to you and you can share your knowledge about this music and your experiences with jazz to, to the public here. And I wanted to go back, you know, how you got started in jazz. You know, I know you got started very young. I heard you do a show with Pat Murray, who uh, does Radio Skywriter here mm -hmm. for our station. And, uh, you know, I'm familiar with that interview and, and your early story. But uh, please share uh, your early start and your love for the music from a young age. Yeah, I, I grew up in the Richard Allen Home Projects in North Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was in and out of uh, Bill Cosby's house. Uh, I used to play with his younger brothers. And uh, uh, I used to go to uh, Whisper Elementary School, and when I was in the fourth and fifth and sixth grade, mm -hmm. people like Lee Morgan and uh, McCoy Tyner and uh, uh, Lex Humphreys and uh, uh, Smacking the Breast used to come and play concerts. And, and he did that bass thing. And, <laughs> yeah. and so when I seen that, I said, oh my God, this yeah. is what I want to do. Yeah, at, a, at an early age. So that's the importance of yeah. uh, getting people yeah. to, to we, experience We had an apartment. Room. My apartment, they used to call it the music room house. Mm -hmm. I mean, the music room. Because we, I had drums and the microphones and the piano. and I had everything in my, in my house. As, as a young person? At, yeah, when I was like five, six, seven years old. Yeah. And I understand you used to... I used to have to understand. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I understand that you used to go to visit some jazz clubs and listen at early I used to go to jazz clubs when I was like 12, 13, 14 years old. Yeah. And sit in. Yeah. They used to have the matinees on Saturdays. And uh, Russ Samuel and Kirk used to let me sit in, Cannon Hall. Uh, I got a chance to play with John Coltrane for three nights. Wow. Yeah. And Max Roach used to let me sit in. I was yeah. real close with Max. I tried to sit in with Miles, but he didn't let me sit in. But I became real friends, real close to him yeah. in New York further. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, who else did I sit in? Interesting, you're talking about you, uh, uh, Miles wouldn't let you sit in. But I understand at one point you went on to hire Miles for your band, right? Well, when I did my first album, I went to Miles and asked him, could he play on the album? Yeah. He told me, well, you know, you just start now. Wait, wait, for, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. But I used everybody else. I used Herbie. And I eventually used Ron Carter on the second album, Buster Williams, all, you know. Yeah. And I kind of grew up with Buster. So, I mean, uh, you were really with the jazz chants from a very, very young age. Very, very young. Yeah. As a matter of fact, they used to all come to Philadelphia 
Penn State for six nights. Yes, sir. Also, you played with Pharaoh Sanders. Yeah. For, uh... <laughs> That's okay. That's cool. We have to edit, huh? Matter of fact, I'm going to turn mine turn off. Turn mine off. <laughs> This will be edited. So uh, I understand you even played with Pharaoh Sanders and he had a great influence on your life. Yeah. Uh, just a minute, sir. I'm just going to start it again. <clears throat> We're taping this, right? Yes, sir. It's oh, going to be, yeah. It's not live? No, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. And I also understand that you uh, played with Pharaoh Sanders and he had a great influence on your, your big, appreciation. Big influence. Uh, matter of fact, uh, when I got a chance to play with John Coltrane, Pharaoh was playing with John Coltrane. Yeah. That's where I met him. Yeah. It was uh, John, uh, Jimmy Garrison on bass, McCoy Conn on piano, and... Uh, and Barrel, yeah, and John, yeah, and uh, uh, yeah, the quartet, well, quintet with Barrel, and and that's how I got to play with Barrel because he heard me with John, yeah, and I, when I moved to New York when I was 17, I got a chance to go, I used to go out to John's house and play with just him and Alice Coltrane and and. Uh, and I got a chance to play with Archie Shep. Let's go to his loft and play. Just me and him. Yeah. Me and John and Alice and Farrell start hiring me. And again, at what age were you then? I was uh, uh, 18. So why do you think 19. that they uh, took to you and appreciated you so much, a, a young guy like you? You know, I mean, this is some heavy music. I had, I, <laughs> you know, uh, when I was in Philly, when I was studying in Philly, and I had a great teacher. I had great teachers in Philly. And I, I think I was more advanced than I thought I was. Okay. So when I moved to New York, and uh, and I was scared to death when I came to New York. And, uh, and you know, could all the, being around all those giants. Yeah. But I had met them when I was so young, so I was kind of used to them. Yeah. Advanced, you must have been very mature as well. Huh? You must have been very mature well, in your attitude as well. Well, they say I guess I was, but I didn't. I didn't think of it like that. Yeah, yeah. I never thought of it like that. Yeah. But I think I was just so into music so much. Yeah. Nice to practice, and and I was around the music so much. Eight. I used to spend eight, ten, twelve hours a day and with the music every day, since I was ki since I was a kid. Yeah. Up to my teens. So I was just it was, it was just all music. Yeah. And so you have played with them. You toured. I so when I when I got to New York, I got a full scholarship to Juilliard. So I'd go to school in the day and hang out in the clubs at night. So that's what I used to do. Yes. And on the corners would be people like from Jack G. Jeanette to, it was all kinds of people. You know, so that's what I did every night. Yeah. And it took me, it took me about a year and a half to get in to start playing with somebody. And how much were you making when you started out? <clears throat> were you able to make a living on the music back then? Mm, well, my, my <clears throat> first gig, my first gig was with uh, my first gig was with uh, Jack McDuff. Wow. Uh, he had George Benson with him, and and he had a nice uh, two horns, and had a real nice group. And I auditioned, and I took Joe Duke's place, and I got the gig, and we started traveling the Midwest, different places. Yeah. So that was my first gig. As a matter of fact, before I got that gig, I was going to I, I took I had taken the, the post office test. The, the work at the post office. And I was good, ready to go in the post office when Jack McDuff, I, he said, take me on the road. Change, change your so life. I had to do that. <laughs> yeah, change your life. Yeah. Yeah. So I went on the road with Jack, and then, I, and then from that, uh, a lot of organ, other organ players, Larry Young and and uh, uh, Charlie Earl, and it was all kind of organ players. I started playing with all of them. Yeah. So I was making a good living just working with the organs yeah. up in Harlem and Big Newark. difference of playing with them and playing with Favreau, huh? Big difference. Yeah. Yeah. And then I, I was doing that and I played with Lou Donaldson. He had an organ wow. he had an organ group. Yeah. And Lou, uh, I was work I was living in in uh, I was living in in the Bronx at the time and I lived right across the street from Lou Donaldson. Yeah. And he saw he hired me and 
he used to talk to me all the time. And uh, he, 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 I used to play a certain kind of way, and he was trying to change me. And I said, you know, he said, you have to play like that. You have to take that, they take that kind of plan downtown. So, mm -hmm. so eventually, I started playing in the village more with Jackie McLean and Barrow and all those kind of people with Sun Ra and, you know. So I played one way downtown and another way uptown. And you were comfortable with all the forms of the ways you played? You were yeah. comfortable with it all? Because mm -hmm. cause you just had the technique down? I mean, I mean you were I, so I, technically confident. I was flexible. Yeah. I played with the, the avant-garde guys downtown and uptown. It was like swing, yeah, straight swing. So when did you make the transi transition to? Well, when I got with Farrell, yeah, I, that was heaven to me. And and and, and playing with Train and that whole thing. That's that's where I wanted to be. So that was my, you know, that was my cup of tea. But now, uh, what are you going to be performing uh, for the folks here in Durham? Well, you know, when I started recording, mm -hmm. I, you know, I was, I, you know, I was so influenced by Pharaoh and Miles and that whole thing. You know, I tried to put, you know, I had, I was influenced by all of that. Yeah. And then, after I, I recorded for about maybe my fourth or fifth album, I started, I, ch I started changing a little bit because Miles was changing. Yeah. And I was hanging with Miles and Herbie and all of them a lot, and Herbie was on all my records. So they were changing. I, I started changing. I said, I'm not going to let these guys leave me behind. And when I changed, the, the, the real the guys that was real dedicated to that one avant-garde style, you know, I, I, I left that. Yeah. But I, it was all in me, you know, and I loved those guys, but I loved, I loved everything. Yeah. And I wanted to incorporate uh, my uh, R&B knowledge and, and the love of the Temptations and the love of Stevie Wonder and the love of Ray yeah. Charles and yeah. Yeah. Aretha Franklin, yeah. that was in yeah. me too. Yeah. Yeah. So when I started recording, I got to a point where I said, well, let me take all this up, take all of that, where I came from, along with this R&B thing, and, and let me see if I, if I could put it all together. And when you put it together, what do you call that? Well, they say I crossed over into R&B, but <laughs> I guess it, it was like a fusion. Yeah. A fusion of R and B and, and jazz, and you're still playing that now. Yeah, yeah, that's what you're being contemporary. Presenting. They call it contemporary. Yeah. They call it uh, soul jazz. I mean, they got all these different names. Smooth jazz. I've been playing smooth jazz. What they call smooth jazz. I've been do, I was doing that in the '70s. Yeah. But who was doing it before me was Herbie, and uh, and and uh, 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 keyboard player uh, Ramsey Lewis. Oh yeah. And Ahmed Jamal yeah. and can't get no smoother than those yeah. guys. So, I mean, you've been uh, all over the world playing. Tell me about how different, I mean, people in different countries, how do they appreciate traditional oh, compared wow. they, to contemporary? They super, super appreciate yeah. everything. Yeah. You know, I, I went, in my early years, I used to go to Copenhagen, Sweden, Denmark, Paris, everywhere. I was going everywhere and playing little, uh, you know, my, my first three or four albums was uh, really, we stretched it. Yeah. And they really, they really appreciated that and loved that. And I used yeah. to play the Montreux Jazz Festival. Yeah. And we stretched. Yeah. And then later on, when I, when I started playing more contemporary, more R&B-ish and, and contemporary and mixing the two genres, uh, uh, I played more, I didn't, I didn't play as many of those places as I used to. Wow. And uh, so, do you still tour? I know yeah, you, yeah. Yeah, we do. Uh, well, up to uh, when the planes crashed uh, in 2000, up to about 2001, uh, me and Angie Bofield was touring a lot together. And I was doing like 99 and 100 concerts a year. You said the planes crashed? Uh, and, uh, oh, and not there was buildings in New oh, York. New York. Yeah. So uh, up to that point, I was working a lot. So uh, that event changed. Yeah, it changed things. Okay. I started cutting my whole thing in half. Why or is less. That? And why is that? Have you had a personal effect on you that you've seen? No, no. Oh. Or it did have a personal effect on me. I mean, it had a mental effect on me. You know, people dying like that, yeah, and yeah. that happened. But I was, it would, um, I think it just had an effect on, on promoters and. Okay. All right. And just the way things. Were you in New hired. York? Were you in New York at that time? I was in New Jersey at my mother's house at the time. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Okay, we got about uh, one minute. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna do uh, uh, another part of this, but maybe on the other side of uh, this interview, you can tell us about uh, what you're gonna be doing here in the Triangle. And tell us about uh, recordings that you're, you're you're putting out. You're still recording, and maybe yeah, I'm still working on a new recording. Yeah. I'm celebrating my 40 year anniversary. Okay, we're gonna talk about that in the second yeah. half. Here at 90.7 FM WNCU North Carolina Central University. <laughs> um, you know, we had Dee Bridgewater, we had okay. Jane Conn, we turn had... Turn the mic, know. turn it on. Don't let us lose this, man. Don't, don't let no, us... No, I don't, I don't... I mean, <laughs> no. I sing, yeah. and I scat, and I do you, some do things, Do you have it but... on? Turn it on. <laughs> we don't want to lose this. <laughs> well, we can always get... We, we, okay. <laughs> we'll get it to it so, later. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're listening to 90.7 FM WNCU, proudly presenting and preserving America's treasure here at North Carolina Central University in the studio with us. Uh, we have uh, the wonderful uh, drummer, vocalist we found out, the band leader, Norman Connors, uh, and he's going to be performing at the Hay Tai Heritage Center. He performs two sets uh, tomorrow, or well, Friday, and 7 and 9 down at the Hay Tai Heritage Center, and uh, go on down to see him. You're going to enjoy the show. Uh, what's in store for our listeners when they come to see you tomorrow night? Uh, I do, of course, we do all our hits. We do You're My Starship. We do Best Rock Golly Wow. Mm -hmm. Uh, we do Valentine Love, we do uh, Invitation, we do uh, 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 Creator Has a Master Plan, oh, yeah, we yeah. do Herbie Hancock's Butterfly, I have a version of it, we do. Uh, and we do some, uh, we might do Do I Do, we do uh, Funkin' for Jamaica, Tom Brown. Tom Brown, yeah. We do, I mean, we do so many different things, you know. And the name of your band? Starship Orchestra. Okay, tell and, us. Uh, uh, we have a new singer. She's been with us about a year now, a little, about a little over a year. And her name is Theonita Valentin. Okay. And she's uh, similar to like, uh, she's somewhere between Jean Conn and Phyllis Hyman. Okay. Has the same sound. Yeah. Beautiful. So both of those uh, ladies recorded for you, Phyllis Hyman. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I started out with Dee Dee Bridgewater. Yeah. And then I, and Jean Conn came with us for three or four years and went to Philly International. And then Phyllis came with us for a few years. Yeah. Yeah. And then after her was Eleanor Mills, we did the uh, This Is Your Life, that was a big hit for me. And then after that, I went to Chicago and got this little young singer. She just got out, got out of high school. Her name was, we just call her Ada Reefer. And we had a, a, a hit called Invitation. Okay. And she, and she went to Motown. And, and so you discover artists as well? All these are my, all my discoveries. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you told us about a, a young man uh, who, who Spencer with Harrison. Yeah. I started out, uh, I had a, uh, well, I had Michael Henderson, I had Glenn Jones, uh, and I had this guy, Spencer Harrison. Uh, I had another girl, her name is, uh, she teaches at, uh, she teaches at uh, uh, Berkeley School of Music in Boston. And uh, so this guy, Spencer's from Philly, and I, I took a little time off. Uh, in between 1984 and 1988, and he, and I was, I went to his restaurant. I had a keyboards, mm -hmm. and uh, he saw me, and he showed off. And him, his sister, and another uh, singer by the name of Liz Hogue. And I, when I heard him sing, I said, "I'm, I'm going to take all of you." Mm -hmm. So I took all of them, and we, we went to the New York to the bottom line, and we. Uh, had sold out shows and stuff, and I took them to uh, Delaware and a few other places. I said, wow, I got something here. So we recorded. And that's when I recorded for, for Capitol, um, uh, one, one album for Capitol. And then I recorded uh, two albums for Motown. Okay. Must, must give you a great deal of pleasure to bring these young people along. Oh, yeah. 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 It, it, it just makes my whole, makes my life, uh, you know, when I, uh, uh, when I went to Motown, I had I got Norman Brown, yeah, and we got him all. That's now, he's a big star. That's the, like the tradition of it. Uh, Cats brought you along, and we're bringing along young people now. It's, it's just uh, the tradition continues with this wonderful. Oh music. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I, I, yeah. I helped a lot of people. Yeah, I mean all those, all these people were unknown when they first came with me, and now everybody knows them. And so it, yeah, that makes you feel good. And you're still you're still finding talent. Still finding talent. Yeah. Okay. Um, and you you were talking about not only do you you sing and you compose, I mean drum and compose, you sing 
and a range. Yeah. And I sing, <laughs> I sing a little. Yeah. 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 I'm a band leader to sing, but I, I don't do that much singing because I have such great singers around me. Yeah. So I don't sing that much. I don't know how many other drummers sing. Uh, we have, you know, Grady Tate is from Durham, North Carolina. Tate, Atlanta, Durham, excellent Durham, singer. Great singer. Yeah, I was really surprised when he came. First time I saw him, he performed here on the campus and uh, a wonderful, wonderful singer. Yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, like Tony Williams, he, he, sung, he sings about as much as I sing. Tony Williams used to sing a little bit. He used to play and sing. You know what? I, I was playing a CD uh, in the studio just the other day, and Mel Torme drums. Did you know that? He used to, he used to yeah. be, I heard him on the disc, and they announced it. Junior, too. Wow, yeah, so it's not so unusual no. uh, that drummers sing as well. Sammy Davis? Yeah. He used to, he played drums very well, and he, and he was an excellent singer and a great dancer. Yeah. And that's what you wanted to do. You, yeah, I heard yeah, that well, you wanted to tap well, dance well, and well, dance Sammy like Sammy was Davis. A, yeah, yeah I, um, when I was 12 and 13, I, I tap dance. I used to tap dance down the steps on tables and... You know, and Sammy was my idol. Yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. So I used to sing, dance. In, in those days, and I used to do all this for, for, my, for my mother's friends. I used to sing, tap dance, and play the drums. Yeah. Tell us about your opinion about the state of the arts, the state of music now. Now, how, how, how do we get young people to come up and appreciate, you know, this art form and, 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 and just art in general? Well, you know, I, I would wish that more people would uh, get into the history of music, study study their history, and we have such a uh, we have such a great uh, work of music. I mean, uh, uh, the, the the music that we have, all the great artists and all the great compositions and composers, and I mean, it's, it's just unbelievable. And uh, more people should really get into it because uh, it's just you know when I was young, I had all that to work from. It's all in me. I used to go. I used to watch Duke Ellington when I was six, seven years old. I sit sit in the front front row, and I would watch Duke Ellington and Cab Calloway yeah, wow. and and, and uh, 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 Count Basie and uh, Dizzy Gillespie. I mean, I just watch all this at a young age, and I wish more people was, would do this. And we're just such such a great. I have all this music in me. What do you suggest to parents? just the public, you know, that they can do to promote music and instill the musical well, values in well, kids, what do you suggest? It's a drag that, that uh, they took uh, They took the, the music out of a lot of, lot of schools. Yeah. Because that was a great thing. Yeah. And so you need more of that. Uh, I, would hope, I was hoping that Obama would have a, a certain kind of influence to, to, to put the music back into schools, because that would help. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and it, it and the more people would understand the history and the history of all these great people, the more I think things would op open up the radio and, more, and things would open up, be more concerts and and it would just it would just be a a, a healthier uh, all around atmosphere for music. Yeah, has it been a good life for you uh, presenting music? Has it been a good life? Has it been good to you, music? Oh yes. yes sir. Oh my life is uh, I've been so blessed just to. To be around all these greats, yeah. To, to, to see the standards is not the same anymore. So when I when I came up, the stand, I mean, Duke Ellington and all these great people were the standards, and they, they're not here now. Yeah. So the standards is a little different now. I'm not saying that, that, that a lot of a lot of the younger people, a lot of the people now, is not talented. They're still talented, but it, but when I was coming up, you have all these all them great people. That all the great people was a, was there in one city. Yeah. From job Charlie Mingus, Miles yeah. Davis, uh, yeah. Sarah Vaughan, yeah. Ella Fitzgerald. Yeah. Then you had Aretha Franklin. You had, you know, Ray Charles. You had all these different people. James Brown. I mean, it was just unbelievable. I mean, the standards was just so high. So I mean, is there any hope that we will get back to that, or we have those get back to that? Again? Well, all those people. I mean, <laughs> I mean, you had a lot. All those. I understand. Greats. I understand. Yeah. Marvin Gaye. I mean. Yeah. Yeah. You had a lot. I mean. I mean, I lived in Kansas City. You know, I'm from Kansas City, and I live six blocks from the district, the old jazz district, 18th of Ave, down on 12th. I didn't even know it. I didn't know it until I went to college. So I don't. I don't. <laughs> so, I, don't, I, don't I don't ever think it'll, be, it'll get back to that. Yeah. With all those people. So, so what's the hope for for jazz music then? Oh, what, man, is, is there hope? What's the hope? Uh, this gig I'm doing tomorrow. There you go. 
Yeah, right? like so, so come on down yeah. and listen. Come on down and, 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 and uh, look learn and, and listen and support it. And you'll be in the presence of one of the giants, honestly, yeah. of this music. And, uh, and, yeah. uh, uh, and being here, this. Yeah. Being here at the yeah, I hope radio that, station. I hope that we what can you continue. Doing, what you're doing. <laughs> yes. That's it. Hope we can continue Keep on to doing present that. this music everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we, we're running out of time, but I uh, maybe you could compare uh, the, uh, the appreciation of this music in this country to appreciation of the music when you travel around the world. You know, is there is there can you compare them for us? Do I compare them? Yeah, can you compare them? I mean, is there a comparison? I mean, is there a difference? From a personal standpoint? Yes, sir. I mean, yes, sir. No. I mean, the American, the American uh, music, uh, jazz, I mean, jazz musicians in, in, from America, no comparisons. But, I mean, you, it just depends on how you look at things. I mean, you know, if you look at the world, and you got so, so much great music in Africa and uh, great music in Brazil yeah. and, you know, I mean, you know, just world music, period. You know, and, and greatness, yeah. it's all over. Yeah. So. So you think that people should just appreciate the music? You know, period. Yeah, there you go. I mean, such great music in Brazil, such great music in Argentina, such great music in Puerto Rico. So, you know, any place you go, Mexico, it's just, you know, it's all great. What what effect have you seen that this wonderful musical performance has on people in their lives and their attitudes? Tell us about that. Oh, well, you know, music is, is you know, it's like it's, it has healing forces and it just makes you feel good and, you know, I mean, what kind of world would it be without music? There you go. You, you think about it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I'm thinking about a story that I heard about Nat King Cole. That Nat King Cole did a lot for the races coming together because people appreciated his talent, whether they were black, whether they were white, whether right. they were from other countries. Yeah. And, that's an, and that's something that we sometimes overlook, that uh, it helps uh, us uh, get along better together. Not only does, as you said, it soothes us and make us feel good, but when you have an image of a black performer and they're going around the world and performing at a high standard, that affects people's attitude. Yeah, I have uh, their opinion about those people that are performing. Uh, and that's yeah. why, and I guess that's why America used to send out jazz musicians as ambassadors at one time. They are, <laughs> you know. Yes. And they, do they still do that? I don't right. know. Well, look all the, yeah. look at the influence that the, our music have on the white people, like the, that, like the white entertainers now. Yeah, yeah. You know, even the young entertainers, they all sounding something like us, a yes, little sir. like us. Yes, sir. They influence big time like yeah. us. Yeah. So, so come on down to the Haytai Heritage Center. That's to, uh, Friday at 7 and 9 p.m., two shows. Uh, if you're busy doing the 7 o'clock hour, come on in later. And uh, I guess, uh, Norman, will you have uh, uh, not only they get to hear you, but maybe you have some of your music that, that you can... Yeah, uh, the best of... Uh, I have all the CD with all these great people on it for sale. Yeah. yeah. You know, I have a lot of them. Ticket information at uh, Haytai's website, Haytai. You can look it up, haytai.org. I don't have the address of the Haiti Heritage Center, but you can look that up and uh, go on down and enjoy one of the, the, the really influential uh, figures in the history of this music performing right here in the Triangle. And uh, I wrote a book. Okay. Autobiography is coming out. I don't know when. Hopefully within the next six to six months to a year. And I'm celebrating my 40 years as a recording artist. Ah, congratulations. Now. congratulations. And I'm doing a, a CD on that, and that CD hopefully will be coming out within the next three or four or five months. Okay. And the address? 30 guests on it. 30 okay. guests. Everybody that, that came through me through the years and new people and some added attractions. Uh, send it to the station. We'd be happy to present it to the public oh, so definitely. they can be a part of that history. We do have an address for the H.I. Heritage Center. It's 8040 Fayetteville Street here in Durham, North Carolina. And again, Norman Brown uh, brings his Starship Orchestra uh, for your listening pleasure. Norman Connors. Norman Connors. Part Norman of the, Brown is one of my discoveries. We're, we're going to edit that guitar. out. <laughs> we're going to edit that out. <laughs> Norman Connors with uh, Starship Orchestra at the Haytai Heritage Center, two shows, 7 and 9 p.m. Thank you so much for okay. joining us here at WNCU. All right. Appreciate it. Okay.